Hi, this is Nisha, and we've done many videos, most of them probably putting you to sleep, on Japanese rifles and pistols, even one kind of quasi submachine gun. And to wrap things up, I thought we would look at the bayonets. Really, there's only one major type of Japanese bayonet that was used in World War I and World War II. That was the Type 30, and all of the ones on the table are Type 30s. They're just from different generations and eras. The original Type 30 bayonet was adopted with the 18, excuse me, with the Type 30 rifle in 1897 and remained not only in service but even in production until 1945. It was used on the Type 30, Type 35, it was used on the Type 38 and the Type 99. It would also fit the Type 2 paratrooper, although they did issue a special short bayonet for the paratrooper. Other guns like the Type 44 carbine had their own integral bayonet, so obviously it wasn't for that. But pretty much every Japanese gun, even the carbines, the 30, the 38 carbine, took the Type 30 bayonet. So, so we'd talk about it. We have quite a long critter here. This is an early version. Pretty typical bayonet for the day. It has a hooked quillion, a cross guard. This is for catching an opponent's bayonet. Also, it's just kind of a flare that looks neat. This was a very common trait on bayonets of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. But most militaries would drop it in World War I. Japan, however, would keep on manufacturing bayonets with this hooked quillion into the 20s. Early ones would have a polished blade like this and left in the silver with grooves on each side. This edge would not at all be sharpened, would have quite a point to it, and would have not an overly sharpened, but an edge here. Wooden grips, otherwise pretty standard. It would fit, I always end up putting these in the wrong way the first time, you'll see. Yep, see, told you. <laughs> they only go in one way. This is an early-ish scabbard. It has kind of the cylinder type point. Otherwise, just a pretty unadorned metal scabbard. Next, we have this pattern here. This would be a pattern adopted in the 1930s of the Type 30 bayonet, still very much a Type 30. The major difference is we got away from the hooked cross guard, the hooked quillion, to just a simple straight edge. We now have a blued blade, still with the grooves, full of grooves. And this would be pretty much standard at the beginning of World War II, although plenty of hooked cross guard versions would still be around. Much like with Japanese rifles, these would be made at different factories, and different factories would kind of do their own thing to some extent. So there are tons of variations. This one has the round ball at the end. Just a minor little variation there. Next, we get into the last ditch bayonets. Sorry, this one has... Notice we still have the straight cross guard. We have simplified wood grips. We have a very thin bamboo scabbard that's kind of held together with these ties. This one's coming apart a bit. This one's still pretty solid. Two pieces of bamboo. Very thin metal cap made of pot metal. The blade itself is still blued, but it's more of a wartime style bluing. Very rushed. The fuller grooves are now gone. Very simple blade. These are sometimes mistaken for training bayonets. 
A training bandit will look similar, but it's made of much lighter weight metal. This is still actually made of steel. And it would start to be issued in 1944, give or take, towards the end of the war. The so-called last ditch rifles. And here is a really light war one. Sorry, this one has a crack in the scabbard, but these are so thin, it happens. Scabbard's pretty well the same as the other one. This one has very simplified. Grips. You see they're, the grooves are basically gone. They're just straight wood panels. Still have a blue blade. Still no groove. Very, very simple. But even at the end of the war, they were still issuing bayonets. The last ditch guns, though, though they deleted many features, one they never did was the bayonet lug. Whereas in Germany, with the Kriegs model, that was one of the first things to go. So different uh, priorities for different nations. Again, here's the early one with the shiny blade. Very well made. These bayonets weren't just made for show. They were made for actual use. They're made of very good steel. And soldiers were trained on how to use them in combat. But yeah, just thought we would look at the Type 30 bayonet. I am not a bayonet collector, so I don't know a lot of the ins and outs. I just have a few for my Arasakas. I'm more of a rifle collector. But it's always good to have a few bayonets. I really like the late ones. I think the, nam the bamboo scabbards are very interesting. Well, hope you like this little video. If you haven't already, please check out our other Japanese videos. We have a, a large number of them, and we've tried to do a very thorough job of looking at the different models, even a few rare ones. Really appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions, please post them below. If you have pictures of your own Type 30 bayonets, we'd love to have you post those too. If you like the video, please click. If you haven't already subscribed and could, we'd really appreciate that. This is Nisha, and we'll catch you next time.